What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Tiberius, back again with another video. Now, it is 6.30 in the morning. Everybody in my house is sleeping. I'm still drinking my coffee, waking up my mind, but I wanted to get this video out to you. It's gonna be a little different than most. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you probably know that I am training for the tactical games in Pennsylvania exactly one month from the day I release this video. It is on August 8th and 9th in 2020. So what is the tactical games? The tactical games, I call it CrossFit with guns. They call it functional fitness meets combat. So climbing obstacles, climbing ropes, running a mile and then trying to shoot a gun, carrying very large, heavy, awkward optics, uh, optics, objects, excuse me. Uh, all sorts of really, really funky, crazy obstacles uh, that they throw you away. And it's not only physical challenges, it's also mental challenges. You know, run a mile, field strip your uh, rifle, including the bolt, everything all the way down, reassemble it, and then go shoot. So they always have some sort of mental twist as well. But if you want more information, check the link below, and there'll be a uh, link to their website if you want to get more information. Now the Tactical Games has five different divisions. The first one is gonna be Elite Division, which I am definitely not. They're gonna have a Masters Division for men over 45, which I am definitely not. They have a Women's Division, which I don't think I am. They have an Intermediate Division, which is that is the one I entered, and I hope I can hang in that division. And now new this year, they have a Light Division. And I don't know if I fully understand it, but I don't really like that they have a Light Division. This is just my opinion. The light division allows you to skip any obstacle or challenge or whatever um, and not do it if you're not able, or able to or not comfortable doing it. Now the reason I don't like it is, in my mind, the intermediate division is for anyone who is not an elite athlete but wants to challenge themselves, like myself. Um, and each obstacle there is a opt-out. So if you can't climb a 20 foot rope, no big deal give us 10 burpees or 10 jumping jacks. So whatever the opt-out is, they have that for you for the people who can't handle it. So having the, the light division, for me, is kind of like everyone gets a trophy and I don't know if I really like it. But if I'm missing something, let me know. Anyway, I'm making this video for two reasons. One, just to let you know what I have going on and spread the word about the tactical games because it looks really, really cool. Second, and definitely more important, I'm looking for any tips or advice or any help. If anybody who has run the Tough Mudder or Tactical Games or anything like that at all, any tips or suggestions, leave them in the comments. All of them will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Before the um, <clears throat> lockdown that we went through recently, I was doing really, really good. I was going to the gym four or five days a week. At the same time, I was going to the CrossFit gym three days a week, and I was doing really, really good with my fitness. And then the four months I've been home, I have been one lazy sack of potatoes. Uh, the gym reopened, I started going back to the gym, and then I hurt my elbow. I was shooting too much, God forbid. I was shooting about 500 rounds a day for the past couple weeks, now my elbow is all jacked up. So my plan is I can't really lift heavy weights, so I'm gonna do a ton of running and a ton of CrossFit style workouts to help myself get ready for the tactical games. There will be lots of running, there'll be lots of pulling my kids on sleds, rope climbs, running with sandbags, squats, all that type of stuff. As long as it's not heavy weights, it doesn't bother my elbow, and hopefully my elbow will feel better by the time the tactical games rolls around. Now, I'm not really worried about the shooting aspect. Again, if you watch any of my videos or follow me on Instagram, I'm always running and gunning, carrying heavy sandbags, doing burpees while I shoot, all sorts of things like that, shooting from awkward positions. So I think I'll be okay with the shooting. What's definitely gonna kill me is all the cardio endurance. Um, even though I've lost a bunch of weight, I've lost like 60 pounds over the past few years and about 20 pounds this last year, um, I am not in peak cardio conditioning. So that's gonna be the hard part for me. But uh, I'm too stupid to quit. <laughs> I'm not going to win. Uh, I am just going to finish and not finish in last place. That is it, that is my goal. I'm not trying to challenge anyone for first place. I am just trying not to come in last. Oh, coffee, coffee, coffee. All right, as far as the kit I'm bringing, I have my Ferro Concepts Slickster. This is by far my favorite plate carrier. This would be the one I use the most and the one I will be using for 
uh, tactical games. Now, your plate carry has to weigh at least 15 pounds, and my plates are only like five, five and a half. So my buddy, uh, Mr. Wick, is letting me borrow his plates. They are just under eight pounds each. So just his plates alone will get me um, over that 15 pound mark, so I'll be fine. I'll also be running this kangaroo pouch in the front from um, Ferro Concepts. I like it because the inserts are modular. I can take out a couple rifle ones and add a couple pistols and do whatever I want based on that. Uh, they, they, each challenge they call them a skirmish. So based on that skirmish, I can set up this plate carrier however I need to. Also on the side here on the cummerbund, it's elastic stretchy. I can put other pistol, rifle magazines, and anything else that I need. Um, and I will have that on my back because God wins and God always has my back. Uh, and that's it for the plate carrier. Next, my battle belt. I have a high speed gear uh, battle belt. Stick with multicam. Uh, the uh, holster is actually a G code holster. I know I normally run M2, but they don't have any RTI with active retention, so I had to go with the G code one. The um, carrier here, I forgot who makes these, I just drew a blank. Uh, someone can drop it down in the comments because I know these are very pop popular. Two pistol, one rifle magazine, and that's all I'm going to have on my belt. I usually keep a med kit on me. I don't know if I want the extra weight, but I'll probably end up putting some sort of med kit on there. Even though I have a tourniquet on my plate carrier, I like to have something else, quick clot, something like that. Uh, what's next? What's next? Rifle. Now, I don't know which rifle I want to bring and I want to shoot. I think I'm going to bring this one. Uh, I'm thinking about bringing this one because this is my beater rifle, so I don't mind beating the heck out of it. I do it all the time. This is the uh, Franken rifle that I use in all of my videos to test anything rifle related. I have more, more rounds through this rifle than any other rifle I own. I'm hesitant because it's a 16 inch barrel. It's not very heavy rifle, but it is very long. I don't need the 16 inch barrel. A 10 or 11 inch would be absolutely fine. Um, so the little bit of reduction in weight probably wouldn't hurt, um, but I'm most comfortable with this. So I'll figure that out. The only thing I need to add to this is a set of uh, sights. You're required to have iron sights on your gun, so I have to add that. And then my second choice is do I run this red dot with the magnifier? Or do I put a low power variable optic on there? <sighs> going back and forth, not sure which one. I think I'm going to stick with this because most of the targets are not that far out. The majority are closer. And obviously, typically a red dot is going to be faster and have much better eye relief than a low power variable optic. And you're shooting from a lot of unconventional positions. So to me, a red dot makes more sense with the magnifier that I can just flip back and forth. Um, I can easily get hits up to 300 yards with this. I've done it many times and I can't imagine in the intermediate division there's too much of that. A um, couple things about the rifle sling is from Blue Force Gear. This holder is from Neomag. It's a sentry strap. Of course I have my Enforce light on there which I don't think I'll need but I hope I will. Uh, I have a ballistic advantage barrel a aero precision nickel boron bolt carrier so the internals that really really matter the bolt the barrel the trigger are all top 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 notch quality and this gun has never had a malfunction i say that and of course it will of course regardless i will have a backup rifle with me just in case now as far as my pistol no surprise i will be taking one of my h and k vp9s probably the VP9, not the VP9SK. I will have to take this optic off because you are not allowed to have red dots on pistols, tactical games, you need to change that, but you're not allowed. So I have two slides. I'll probably swap the slide to the one without the red dot and I'll be rocking either my VP9 or my VP9SK, but I will bring both of them and figure out which one I want to use that day. All right, as far as clothing, I have these set of gloves from uh, Haven Gear. And every time I climb, I use these because that climbing rope rips up my hands. Feel free to make the delicate girl hand comment below. But I use these gloves when I climb because they're super, super grippy. And the rope climb, I'm not great at. I don't have the best upper body strength. Um, the gloves really help me get a good grip on the rope and make sure I don't tear them, tear up my hands. So I'll be using that. Uh, as far as shirts, I'm just going to be rocking a couple different t-shirts, probably Infos shirts because I love representing. Bring a couple hats because it's probably going to be 9,000 degrees. 
As far as pants, I know these aren't the highest quality pants at all. These are a pair, an inexpensive pair of Condor pants, but I think I'm gonna wear these over anything nicer I have because they are super, super thin and very, very, very stretchy. Again, if it's 90 degrees outside, I don't wanna be wearing a pair of thick Vertex pants or, or uh, the uh, Magpul, uh, the 511 pants or uh, even the Carlos Ray tactical distributor pants. They're all just so thick. This is so light that I think I'm going to, I have uh, two pairs of these. I think I'm going to bring two pairs of those. As far as my footwear, I have my A Solo boots. They're kind of the best mix of running, hiking, climbing, all those mixed into one with good ankle support. Uh, I wear these at the range all of the time, and I think I will be bringing these for uh, footwear. Eyes and ears. Actually, hold on. I'll make it. I'm going to make it. Eyes and ears, guys. Uh, the main set of ear protection is these Walker Silencer in-ear Bluetooth. I absolutely love these. I have several videos on them. I've brought them up in a bunch of different videos. Um, I use them all the time, cutting the grass, listening to music, at the range, on airplanes, constantly. I love these. These will be my main set of air protection. And then I'll have a backup. I don't know if it'll be these walkers or another pair, but a backup set of air protection just in case. As far as my eyes, I'm digging and I use constantly these ESS Eye Pro. I like them because they come with th uh, two different frames and three different lenses. These are the clear, it has a really dark tinted one, and it has like an amber kind of colored one. So I like that depending on the lighting situations and uh, I can customize them how I want. And then of course, I will have a backup set because I keep a backup set of everything. Ammo, I have some Elite Signature, Elite Premium, whatever it's called, uh, Sig Sauer Elite Ammo, that's what it is. Sig Elite, I think. Anyway, I'm gonna rock that ammo because the last thing I wanna deal with is uh, ammo malfunctions due to low quality ammo. And that Sig stuff, Sig Elite, is pretty, pretty good. So I'll be running that in my pistol and my rifle before I go. <sighs> mine, 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 mine. Anyway, most important piece of kit, piece of gear that I own is my Lucky Rock. I do not go anywhere without my Lucky Rock. I will tell you guys about it one day, but I've carried this rock every day for just over five years now, and I never leave home without it. If you ever see me and you wanna see my Lucky Rock, just ask, because I always have it on me, and that will definitely be making the trip to Pennsylvania. Uh, obviously, I'll have a cooler and food, and I think I'm gonna bring a little grill, because having a warm like cheeseburger or a hot dog instead of a cold PB&J sandwich goes a long, long way when you're tired. Um, and that's it for stuff that I'm bringing for the most part. A lot of water. Obviously, lots and lots of water. <sighs> Need another sip. Now, I uh, met somebody on Instagram, uh, his name is Gunsplaining, also a fellow YouTuber. He's going out as well. I look forward to meeting him, hanging with him, shooting with him. I think we're in the same division, so hopefully we can get grouped up together in the same group and support each other because God knows I'll need the extra motivation. I also have nine friends locally who are going. Um, they're not all friends, honestly. I'm friends with two or three of them, maybe four, and there's a group of nine. So hopefully I'll be able to hang out with them and... Uh, it's always nice that camaraderie when you're at training, especially far away from home. It always builds really, really good bonds. But thank you guys for watching. If you have any tips, suggestions, anything I should or shouldn't do over the next month or at the event, please let me know. I do not do a lot of competitions. They're not my cup of tea, but this is a little different from your standard IDPA competition, that's for sure. So I figured I'd give it a try. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you don't mind, hook me up with a like or a comment or a subscribe or any of those things really, really help me out and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you wanna see some more of the training that I'm doing and making fun of me for it, trying to climb ropes and trying to run, trying to get under a nine minute mile with my plate carrier on, consider liking me on Instagram and Facebook. The links to those are down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this different informal kind of video. I will see you next time. Peace.